early July garden. Had to put that shade cloth up. It's 40%. It's 90 and above for this is now the second week and it looks like it's going to continue to be a hot summer. It's kind of hard on tomatoes. As you can see, I have the leaf spot blight. It's not uncommon here in the south where it's wet. <clears throat> but once you've got it, it just goes everywhere. We do have some lovely green tomatoes, though. So if they can endure, I should have a good harvest. Now, the heat is good when it comes to my cucumbers and my melons, which I have up here protected from the weight in the grow bags. I'll probably have some more. I'll have to add maybe some stronger cross members here to tie it to <laughs> since it's going to be a good year. Also, they're sprawling. There's rooms to sprawl. I have my second planting of green beans popping up here. They should be fine. They'll grow up above the melon. This is where the first harvest of green beans were. They're gone. I have planted some okra. They're older seeds, so I'm not sure they'll come up. And if they do, that'd be fine. I, one or two plants produces plenty of okra for George and I. This is the zucchini. <clears throat> I lost part of it to a vine borer. Another thing that's common here. There's a little pepper I just plopped in there because I had an extra and it's struggling. Don't know. I see a little pepper or two. The other zucchini. And then there's this. This lovely little bell pepper plant. It was beautiful yesterday. Come out today. And of course a cutter worm a which I normally see on tomatoes. I honestly did not know they loved bell pepper plants, but it surely did. It may still recover since there's leaves that it didn't get to on the bottom and a few up here. It was doing so well, so pretty. You just hate to see it. <laughs> Here's another potted tomato. That is a yellow squash crookneck. It was doing real well. Half of it got lost to a vine borer, and the other got attacked by aphids, which I've knocked back, and now I see some new green growth, so I may still get some squash. I struggle having squash here. The buggies are bad. There's my lovely flowers. And another tomato plant. And here's another look at all the tomatoes. In the middle here, I have determinants. And there are tomatoes on all the determinants. Indeterminate along the fence, or netting rather. They can grow as tall as they like. And I do see some tomatoes in spite of this leaf blight. So I'm hoping for enough to actually put a few tomatoes up in jars this year. I never get enough of previous couple of years. So fingers crossed, Lord willing, bless it Lord. Now we'll go over and take a look at the plants around the house. Just a quick look at the loveliness that's coming. Rose of Sharon's blooming and the crepe myrtle's getting ready. I'll show you that again later when it's in all its glory. Not too long now. So here we are at the potted plants. My struggling tomato vines here. You see one little tomato getting ripe. Hopefully there's enough leaves to ripen up the rest, although I doubt if there'll be any more tomatoes from these scraggled. They're very scraggled. And yes, another cutworm doing what they do, ravaging a plant overnight. Caught him, he's gone. Hopefully, like with the other one, that the tomatoes will ripen and I'll probably lose the plant. Patio tomatoes. 
although they have beautiful, strong roots and um, stalk, but only one tomato out of all four so far of the patio tomatoes. And the leaf blight has gotten over here too. The sage is happy. My little sage that got dumped there just is just happy as can be. The tomato plant got pulled here and the I left the volunteer, I think Millen. It's doing well. Here's another little squash plant. It's uh, got a little, little couple baby squash in here. I can keep the squash bugs off, or maybe I will get some squash this year. And this tomato plant has hung in there and gotten very bushy, but I've yet to see any flowers um, that stick around or produce anything. So we'll see. As long as it's growing, we'll leave it. Roses. Leaf blight on them, but they're not bald, and I've seen them get bald. <laughs> and the little potted plants are still doing okay. It's not much to show with the strawberries out back. They're pretty much dormant right now, just struggling against the Japanese beetles that hit us every year here. Tunias. Yeah, lovely. Here's my little row of sweet bell peppers. Each one has some little peppers on them, so the sun will hit the hit over here in about another 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and it will stay for the rest of the day on this side of the house. So. And a couple more scraggly tomato plants with leaf blight. To see a couple little green tomatoes on that one. Oh, four, look at there. This one, flowers. At least there are flowers. It took a long time to even get that, but no tomatoes yet. So that's the early June update. Thanks for checking in. Be blessed. See you later. So I told you I'd give you another look at this lovely crepe myrtle and even this little old Rose of Sharon. It's not in great shape anymore, but look. Look at her in all her glory. Both of them blooming. The bees, of course, love her. The hummingbirds dash in and out. They probably have some nests in her. Just thought you might enjoy. I know we do. So here we are, approaching the end of July. It's here, there's always a lot of bug pressure, mildew, fungus. <laughs> it's a fight to get anything out of your garden. But even with the fungus on the leaf, spotted leaf problem, we have tomatoes. They just need to hang in there long enough to blush. All of these varieties except for the Jet Star there. And I believe they're the triple cross climber there. I've had that before, but I haven't had any yield out of it before, so but all the rest are new to me. And it's the first time I've grown um determinant variety of tomatoes, which have a lot of tomatoes on them if they'll can fight this leaf blight long enough to blush, we'll have plenty of tomatoes. Take a look, I lost my lovely squash to a vine borer. It was all big and beautiful and bam, come out and it's ruined. I'll have to get real serious if I want squash next year take all kind of measures against the vine borers and the aphids. Still got a zucchini hanging in there. A 
beans. Hoping to get a few before summer over. Melon plants, cucumbers. The marigolds are finally starting to bloom over there. That variety didn't do as well in a small pot. Of course, this variety did great in a small pot. The bees love it. I don't see a lot of, I see a lot of blossoms on the cucumbers, but not much fruit happening. I think I saw one here. Here, maybe down in here. Hopefully those blossoms give fruit. I know last year it did the same thing. A lot of blossoms, no cucumbers until later in the season. So we'll see. Melons happening. They like the good hot weather. Hopefully, those will do well this year. Bell pepper plant. If you remember, that cut worm had just devoured it, but it's hanging in there. New growth. Kept two of the older bell peppers, survived it, and now I see some new buds, so. Still got plenty of time. Should be able to get more bell peppers there, which is nice because they are expensive in the supermarket right now. Doesn't look lovely, but it is still producing food, and that is its purpose. Loveliness would be great, but <laughs> I'll settle for getting uh, fruit out of it. There you go. We'll take a look at the others around the house. So, my goodness, these sad little plants. <laughs> I've gotten a couple tomatoes, believe it or not, off of this scraggler that have ripened in the house and been all right. Not large, but tasty. The little patio plants, they've got great thick stalks, but they haven't produced many tomatoes. I see a couple on each one of those. I see none here yet. Blossoms. Of course, they don't have any protection from the heat, and that could be a problem. They might be struggling, I see. And that poor scraggler, a rugger tomatoes. There's some that are blushing, so I'll pull those and let them ripen in the house so bugs don't get them. That one's still lush and green, but no, not producing tomatoes. I did have a cut worm on it that I took off that ate some of the new growth. I see some blossoms, so maybe. Squash plant still surviving here. Looks a little yellow leaves, maybe a little malnourished. I have to check my chart and see when I fed it last. Small pots, they you water them and they lose the fertilizer quicker. But there's blossoms and maybe, you never know. I have hope. Petunias are still lovely. I mean, birds love it. In and out, I've had three feeders and a wasp catcher. Hummingbirds are right back here in the big magnolia behind me, wishing I would get out of their way. I even got uh, a few flowers out of those flowers I planted that did so poorly. Not great at flowers. I'm learning. But they still cheery. There's a petunia that sprang up in the middle of the mint. Pretty. Lemon vine still doing great. Chives. Third year, I think, for chives. That plant likes it there. There we go over here, are the other bell pepper plants. That one is a Leessa. It's kind of little heart shaped bell peppers. I grew them last year. They're not big, but they're very sweet tasting. And this was the one and only pepper plant that I grew from seed that 
made it and she's got food on her. These are just those store-bought ones, but they're hanging in there and every one of them has got a pepper, so I'm happy about that. These tomatoes even way over here. Leaf blight, struggling, but they're hanging in there. I see some tomatoes on that one. Finally, I don't think there's any here still. Blossoms, no fruit. Keep babying it along, you never know. Not lovely, but they're hanging in there. So I guess that's the update on all the garden in July, and I'll be back when we get into August, and we'll see what's doing well and what we're struggling with, see how the weather does, whether it cooperates. I thought I'd catch some hummingbirds. I walked away, and they usually come back. See you later. Be blessed. Bye.